Hello everyone, welcome back to this new Wii U episode for the STM32F1 timer tutorials. And as you can see today, we do have two LED blinking in a different phase. However, this is not the only difference. The other one is one LED is using a delay function to toggle or to blink, where the other is using the interrupt from a timer to blink. So there is a huge amount of computing efficiency here. So if you'd like to know how we could make this and to know which LED is blinking user interrupt, just follow this episode. Within this part of the timer tutorial, we are going to review again the delay function that we have constructed in the previous video and then make it modular. After that, we are going to build and set up the interrupt function, see how the difference between both of them. So as usual, the code is available on GitHub. You can just follow this video, then download the code and compare. We are going to use only C for the programming language and the program will be KL version 5. Finally, this is really for beginner. They also the details are quite good, so you don't have to worry if you don't have a big background to understand how this is working. So from the hardware perspective, we are going to use as usual the STM32F1 based micro, um, board, which is the uh, blue pill. And we are going to need a green and red LED plus two 230 ohm resistors. Finally, if you do have it, using a logic analyzer to see how the signal is working. So from the tutorial perspective, first of all, we are going to check how the base timer interrupt logic works. After that, we will see the registers for the interrupts. Then we will have a circuit review. We jump later on on the delay function, so we are adding modularity to add to the construct that we do have. We will make the interrupt test and review, and finally see an interrupt function. Okay, so let's take a look on how the base timer interrupt logic works. So as we have been reviewing at the beginning, let's take the time, the x axis as a time, and the y axis as the counter value of the timer. And we set up the auto reload register. And what will happen in the microcontroller when we put on the timer, we will have the counter value increasing, reaching the um, ARR, and then getting back to zero each time. Meanwhile, the microcontroller will be working normally within the stack, having stuck from going instruction one, two, three, until the number n instruction or the last instruction of our program. However, if we do set up our microcontroller to work with interrupts, each time the um, counter reaches the AAR value, an interrupt is triggered and goes for a request which is engaged. And this will change our program in a way that the microcontroller stack will get transformed a bit in this way. So we'll have the instruction going on, but when exactly the interrupt happened, instead of going for the next instruction of the program, it will go to the timer leaded instruction and execute this that instruction. So it will be a timely instruction that the program or the microcontroller will be executing, then going back again to the normal instruction and going back to the normal mode. So that's how the microcontroller or the timer will be interacting with the microcontroller when we are going to, in, um, to activate the interrupts. And also one final remark, which is don't use the interrupt only to toggle a pin. So this example that we do have here is just to toggle a pin to see how, what's going on. But this can be used as a timely manner to send a message to make certain computation or check. So this is quite very interesting um, option that you do have when you're programming or when you're dealing with a problem. So this is not only to toggle a pin, and this is even even there is a better way in the compare mode to use it directly without interrupt. So now let's go to the registers for interrupt. So as we discussed before, this is a quite quick reminder. They, we reviewed the counter register, the pre-scale register, and also the auto reload register. Then the register that enable 
the interrupt is a DIR or inter DMA, DMA interrupt enable register. And we are going to need to work only with the bit number zero. And this bit means update interrupt enable. And each time when it became one, if we transform it to one, and this is what we are going to do by software, your microcontroller will have a certain behavior when the timer reaches the uh, auto re reload value. There is another register that we will quite need is the status register. And this one will be focusing on the also the, the bit number zero of that register because each time we need to clear that bit. This will be flagged when we will reach the value, but we need to clear it so we can get out from the interrupt routine. Okay, so we have reviewed our registers. Now let's have a quick review to our circuit. So we are going to take the same circuit we worked on in the previous tutorial and add on the pin PA9, PA9 another LED, a green one, and connect this LED to an, um, a 230 ohm register. So this will be, we will program the A9, PA9 pin in, in a different way. And then we are going to connect the uh, PA9 or also the, or the LED uh, positive um, pin to our logic analyzer so we can visualize what's going on in our system. So now that we have made um, together a quick review, let's start programming and first of all, review the delay function and add the needed modularity. Here we are back to our original code. So we do have the, the code we prepared in the previous video. And also we have a toggling PA8. So now what you would like to go for is to go back to this function that we have created and start being more optimizing or give, giving more modularity to our code. So let's take a look at this delay function. So I am trying to make this one as big as I can so we can see all the thing. And one of the things that is really not dry or do not repeat yourself is this switch because we do see it here and we may use it again. So let's take this uh, this function quite out and we call it here we to get the timer so we call here we need the function exactly same as this one so we take this and we are going to create this function that you call get timer and the only input is char and it will be the timer okay and we can take then this one like this here directly so we can just let's copy it from the moment here bring it here switch timer and we put we define the team as we created here like this and we return the team so that's quite simple and efficient okay that should be good. So what we have to do right now is very simple and easy. We are going to put get timer and instead of having all this and we may might use it in the future, team equal, it will be get timer of timer. And that should be more than good to, to select and find our timer. This is the first one. So it's a quite simple um, optimization where we do have uh, this module that we probably will use in the future video and that will simplify the modularity of our code and also the maintenance. The next one is if we would like to just to start, just to start, so because this is a delay function, but if you would like just to start our timer and get the, the value from time to time, which something can happen so let's close this one and start another one and the return will be returning the team. So what we will do is again, we will define as this one because we would like to return the timer 
if if needed because we may simplify further the code here so and we call it here timer and start micro okay so and recording the microsecond start and micros like this yeah and then the input as usual the timer that we do have the one that we would like to select and the int the micros or microseconds that we would like to have okay so and what we need to do here is quite simple because it's almost exactly same as this one the only difference that we are not going to activate the um the uh, bit that will stop the timer here but keep it run just all the time so we simply bring all this one into prescaler all this up to here actually we can add this one here let's copy all this here like this and here it's only one so and this is to enable just to enable the counter and we do have the same thing so we do have the function that's just start the timer and then doing so would simplify much more our code in the delay function so what we can do simply is we can take this one the timer start micro here like this let's bring it here and we still we will need the team so let's put this one no yeah we have to come here let me make it a little bit bigger so smaller so we can see better so here instead of having 09 so we can change everything here by let's confirm like this so this one will be timer and this one will be int micros like this and we need to add at the end this one and what we need to do is simply we can even optimize further by putting equal to this and then we can immediately go through this one and that should be fine okay that's that's perfect and what we, we can even remove this one because it's not any more relevant and you see now how our code has been optimized because we have put it everything in modules so let me bring this one here so we can have a clean closure and same for this one so we can clean it too and the micros become just three lines and we can man maintain easily the other one so just let's save and build just to be sure that everything goes well we do have one uh, okay so what we need to do is to take this one okay missing return statement at the end where are we having this ah of course we need to return that's clear return and we need to return the team okay that's that makes a lot of sense okay now we are good so we can take a look quickly to our circuit so we do have this is our circuit let me move it a little bit so you can see it better and let me show you so we do have our red pin connected to the pa8 and here we do have our green pin connected to the pa9 and this is the same um timer so let's go and start playing a little bit to see how things are going so let's take this one and what we are going to do is also put a digital output for the pa9 and also here we are copying we can copy this one and we put the pa9 to to be sure that both of them are blinking as we want it so let's save build no issue and let's take a look to the so both of them are working properly and we can even run 
the logic analyzer so let me bring this logic analyzer i think i brought the wrong one so let me check where is my logic analyzer okay just a second yeah sorry guys i would be happy to sing for you the time you're waiting but the logic analyzer oh yeah it's open now yeah it's connecting uh yep open capture no okay new session okay it says the device is not connected connected device okay just one second why the logic analyzer suddenly let me try it again okay let me pause and be back when this completed okay we are back so finally the logic analyzer could work and we can we don't need those channels so let me remove the channels here we do have two uh one connected so this is the one and this is second and if we run our logic analyzer we should see we should visualize everything um, here so let's start reading and let's make it smaller okay it's not reading which is quite very strange okay let's try to find what's going on this is connected and working it should yeah of course because I connected in the wrong place and this is now perfectly working and we can see together that we do have a signal that is um, all it's the same actually and if we go quite really deep here we do have exactly almost the same timing like there is a very small gap between them but we are talking here one microsecond uh, in in and but the scale is really 500 milliseconds so it's quite working properly that's really good that's really good and this is what we expected to have so the next step will be to add few small uh, things that are quite important for example if we would like to get the data so sometimes it's, it's important to get the data and let's close this one and add the new one up before the delay so if we run our timer but we would like to get the data so the output of this function will be an int and we will have get time and let's start with the first one which is micros and the char here is we are like going to take it from the timer itself so this is the only thing we need okay so and here we start we are start to getting a really a use of the um, the get timer function so as usual let's take the type div here and we call it team yeah and that will be equal the get timer and it will be the timer so we will get immediately which timer we would like to use and then we will take my step so we, would, we had like the prescalar um, integer so we put int and my step will be equal to the team, the account of uh, the p scalar, sorry, p scalar one. Okay. And finally, my time, which is the final int that we will take. So my time here, int my time will be equal. So we are going to take my step. How much is my step? Okay. And we are going to multiply by the, the counter value and there was which is extremely important and after multiplying the whole thing we are going to divide by 72 minus 1 which is the one that will give us the microseconds okay and what we are going to return will be just the my time and here we can start running our timer and reading the time from it so that's what we need to return okay we can go even a little bit more drastic 
and we can add the millis if you would like to read the millis and it will be very simple at the opposite of this one so we put millis and timer and at the opposite we just need this one so we call my time here like this timer so we read in microsecond and we divide by 1000 as simple as it is okay okay we are good here and we have the time in millis which is just fantastic um, what else we can do yeah we can also start so we do have the delay function in millisecond but that's that's a delay function in delay in millisecond but if you would like to start it in to start the um, only in micro the, the the timer in millisecond so we can't use this one actually so what we can do we can go back here and let's select the whole thing and we come here and we call it millis get start millis and on this one it's milli okay we call it millis we will see this one getting red and we put just milli minus just milli we don't need here and we call it millis here so if you follow at the previous um, tutorial you'll be very clear about every step here because we went really in details and but that's here where we have to play a little bit and that's the game that we need to do is instead of putting 70, um, 72 minus 1 it will be 3600 minus 1 and this is a half of a millisecond and that's why we will need to multiply this milli by 2 so by putting like this, because our prescaler is going at a half of a millisecond, the number of the auto reload will be multiplied by two. And this is how we will get our milliseconds. So let's save here and build to see if everything goes well. Yeah, we do everything good. So let's close this one close this one so we do have a lot of nice functions close this one too and here we do have really nice functions that we can use um, to understand like to, to really play with our program uh, yeah and based on this one we do have a bunch of nice functions using the timer and they are working so as we have seen in the previous video so we that's working without any issues. So I will run again to check if everything is good. Okay. Okay, so no error, no warning. Um, zero error, zero warning. And if we see it again, that's working properly. And if we run the logic analyzer to see what's going on, let's let me make it a little bit yep you can see we do have a good picture of how the system is toggling okay so now we have up updated and improved our function we can jump to the second part which is seeing how we can set up the um rec uh, the interrupt function for the stm32 f1 timer to start implementing the interrupt we are going to jump on the timer driver place and we start working directly on it because it's just one extra um, uh, register that we have to update so we can directly start so void directly here and we call it timer irq for the interrupt request routine and let me add here this one so let me change it irq and we call it a micro because we would like to have it in microsecond and we put start okay so for this one we will need as usual the timer and also the microsecond that we would like to have in the arr register so we call it micro s 
micro s okay so let's open here and the first thing we can do is immediately we can get exactly the same stuff from the delay uh, function so let me copy this one from the micros here and we bring it here so we need to start our uh, our timer to work and after that we just take the team and dir uh, register this is the one we discussed about and it will be or equal one and this will say to the microcontroller that we would like to start the interrupt routine after that we are going to start the interrupt routine and using the usual function we have been using so far so we are disabling the irq and after that we are going to use the switch function switch here and based on the timer value let's put it like this and open this one here and we'll have the case one if it's equal to one then what we need to have is nvic here nvic enable irq and for the timer one it will be the special uh, erq for timer which is timer one update and this is only for this one and for enabling it after that we just have to break and we are good and what we can add also now so let's copy this one again because we do have four timers and if it is two it's not any more update but we just it's only two because timer one and timer five but not in the stm 32 f1 are special timers and you do have the update irq and this one three three and finally in case we do have the timer four tier four and four so based on that so we started and enabled the irq and finally what we have to do is just adding the dunder enable irq and we are good we're very good so the next step simply is to do the same job let's copy this one but if you would like to have in millisecond it will be exactly the same job so here not micro anymore but milli and this one let's call it milli also or millis let's put millis here where here i will be using the start milli and this one it will be millis maybe this one is millis and then millis to keep the same name and this let's put big s here so here we start um, the interrupt for the millisecond one okay that's good and one last step before we jump to the execution and the testing is to be sure that we are reading the flag each time we go through the interrupt routine and let's create a very quick function which is void here and let's call it for example timer irq like this and we add r for red and we put the flag so we are going to read the flag and what we need is only the timer so we put char and we call it timer like this okay so let's add here and close this one and first of all we need to get the timer so let's go here and we will need to get the timer so we can go to start timer this function and not this one this is the start microsecond what we need is we can directly write it so let's go here copy just equal and jump here and we are getting the timer so it will be get here yeah, it will be get timer i think yeah get timer and we just add the timer you see when you create such a modular code how easy and quick you can develop later on and after that team and we go to the status register and that will be equal it will be and equal because we need to put the first bit of that register to zero so we have to put zero the hexadecimal f f and e to 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 make zero the first the bit number zero to be quite accurate okay so we have created the 
really the function that we need. Um, now let's take a look to our microcontroller. So we do have, yeah, let me adjust it again a little bit like this. So we do have everything running well. And let me bring it a little bit more here. And this is the, our previous code. So this one, let's update this code. And before that, I added here the list of interrupt routine uh, function that we need to call if we would like to start in the interrupt. And they added them, so you just have to copy paste. And on this one, I let me copy this one so we can start and use the interrupt routine for the timer one here. So we will update the code later on. But first of all, and most important, we have to go through the the timer and we are going to write here. So um, timer, ah, now it will not be called because I need to add this one to the header. Let's add these function to the header so we can use them here. And let's copy again. And we call this one is milis. And finally, this one so we can read or actually update the flag. Okay, let me add the extra line just in case so we don't have any warning. Same for here. So let's go here and timer IRQ millis and we will put the timer T1 and we would like to have a 500 cycle. Okay, or period. So after that, what we need to do here is, first of all, we go to timer and we go to the read flag. And here we would like to add is a T1 and timer one that we would like to, to, to read the flag. And let's take this one here. Let me add it to the new line. And we should be good to see both um, uh, LED toggling. So let me show here the, the video. Where is it? Here. Okay, we are good. Okay, so let's first run and build to see if there's no issue. Okay, zero error, zero warning. We are good. So we do have the first LED, the red one, blinking or toggling every half of a second. And normally we should have the same behavior from the second LED. So let's take a look and build and see what's going on. And yeah, you see, we do have some alternance between both of them. And to have a better idea, let's go to the logic analyzer to be sure that we do have the period we have. So let's run here. And we can see, you see here, they are blinking in, in how say, there is not, they are not in phase, but totally at the opposite. So let's play a little bit more. And instead of doing this, let's bring this one here. Let's save, build. Let me put this one here so we can still visualize and see what's going on. And you can see that's because the position of the um, delay function, and that's now we do have exactly on the same phase. So you can see both of them are almost exactly um, blinking at the same timing. Okay, so that was good, but we should have some conclusion about what's going on here. So we do have two LED blinking at the same time, but from the microcontroller perspective, and this is extremely interesting and important, the first LED, we have to wait 50 or 500 millisecond or 500,000 um, 500, microsecond or maybe 30 million or 36 million cycle to have this um, uh, LED uh, toggling, which is which is extremely crazy. So we are wasting 36 million cycle each time to see the toggling. On the other hand, you can see here that we are wasting just enough cycles, maybe 12 or 15 cycle, just to read the flag and toggle the LED. And this is really interesting because from resource utilization perspective, this is much more efficient and you can use the half million cycle each time that you wasted just waiting by your microcontroller to deploy for other things. So that's quite um, a very uh, positive effect from the timer that you can be using. 
and that's very interesting way to, to make it. Okay, so it shouldn't be the last part of this video, but I'm, I'm keeping another part that I'm adding right now. So we do have our timer, it's working perfectly, but I would like to add in the last part of the video um, the, the way of if we would like to stop our timer and if we would like to stop the um, the IRQ, only the IRQ. So in the next and final part of this video, we will see how to stop the timer and close it. This is the last part and it should be very simple and quick. So first of all, we are going to start by stopping the, the IRQ. So let's create this function of void and we call stop IRQ. Okay, so no, void timer stop IRQ, timer IRQ stop, whatever you want it to combine. And let's do it like this. And for this one, we just put, uh, we need only the timer. So we put the timer here. And then what we have to do is, let me create this. So what we have to do is exactly the same thing so that we have used in the um, starting here, the timer, but instead of enable, we have to put the disable. And uh, so it will be almost the same code. So let me bring this one like this here. And we don't need actually the timer start micro, but what we need to take is the get timer, which is just a moment, which is here. So we have to get the timer and we take like this. And on this one, instead of having equal to one, we can put end and the zero, the hexadecimal FFE. So we can close this one. And here, instead of enable IRQ, we need the NVIC disable IRQ. So NVIC and then disable IRQ. So that's what we need to do. Let's take this and copy everywhere so we can disable whatever the timer we are selecting. Okay, perfect. So by this one, we have disabled the IRQ. And we are sure that we, if we are using a timer and we don't want to use any more the IRQ, um, the interrupt routine, we, we can just use this one. And then when we have this one, we can have a final function, which is um, most interesting, is the stopping the timer. So the void timer stop. So if we just want to stop our timer, it should be very simple. And, you know, from power consumption perspective, the timer consumes um, consumption is quite uh, not significant, but if we think on that way, we, we need to, uh, that will be interesting. So we take this one as usual. I love this function. It's everywhere, simple and quite um, very handy. And we take the timer, first of all, CO1, and that will be equal to zero because we would like to stop the timer. And after that, we are going to go back again about which register we would like to the, the one to stop. And this is here. If timer equal one or it's equal a different number, we go back here. And so if the timer is equal to one, this one will be end here and it will be tilt of this function. So the reverse of that same here. It will be end. And let's put this, the whole thing within parentheses. And we can put the tilt function here. That will totally stop the power for that timer. And for extra measure, this is something that we can add. We can just add this one here. So if there is an interrupt which is following this, we don't need to keep it within our program. And we just stop our timer. So here, timer is working. So let's add this extra space here. Add those function to the header. So this one, the timer stop, and also the IRQ stop here. And we are really good. So I can even put this one up like this, and this one like this. That's all. So this is the two function that remained that will stop the timer, whatever is under IRQ or not. And here 
we finished all the function we needed. We had a quite a good example how to make a function more modular. And then, as you have seen by yourself, it's very useful to have this small function that you can manage easier. And after that, we went through the IRQ. We have seen how we could save a lot of um, computing energy or efficiency to do to have that. Okay, hope you have enjoyed today's session. See you soon, and thank you a lot.